Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Keen. I've got a hundred dollars smoking in my bed. Good morning and welcome to Top Story, 7360300. Always the number to call. And good morning, Jill. Good morning, Kelly. Here we are on a Friday. Now, this is actually our last Friday of the year because we are off the day after Christmas, right? That's and right. the day after New, uh, New Year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our the last, last Friday open of the Friday for the year. That's kind of what I thought, you know. And, and we've had a busy week, we've had a lot of people come in, and we've had. You know, some contentious issues to speak of. And here it is Friday. You know, Friday is kind of a oh. day to let your hair down a little bit, relax a little bit, talk about some stuff that's maybe not as contentious. You know, just kind of have a good time. And that would be what? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We do have, and shoot, I forgot their names and I apologize. We have the two food experts from the public health department coming in this morning to talk about food safety again. We had such a good time last time, and Jill had such a good time trying to embarrass them that we thought, you know, and they handled it so well that we thought, this was fun, let's do it again. Well, the good news is they followed their tips and survived Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> they must have put their turkey in the refrigerator within the two-hour time limit. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> we learned all sorts of stuff. So do they have new ones for a new Christmas or new food items like the know. ham? I don't know. What do you eat at Christmas, ham? or turkey whatever you want well i know you do but what's traditional oh i suppose what's traditional ham. for people more ham than ham, turkey hams. i think a lot of people have turkey but what do you think and that if you say christmas like thanksgiving okay so they think uh, turkey. Chris, probably christmas ham it is a ham okay yeah. maybe, well maybe i guess a roast i guess it must be ham you guys got hams for we do yeah yes indeed i always get a gift card to fred meyer which is so nice <laughs> Yeah, the ham is a little weird on two levels, <laughs> yeah. vegetarian and Jewish. So they're very kind to be so considerate to me here. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if that's going to work. We also have uh, Paul Arrington coming in. He's always fun to talk to anyway, but he's going to be talking about death by chocolate. I know. We are looking for more sponsors. You know, it's around the corner, and I swear, I think this year snuck up on us. It didn't. Yeah, say. yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities, and this is our 10th annual. Can you believe that, Kelly? 10 years. For me, it's 11, because I did it for my club back in Boston and then yeah. came out here. So uh, 10th annual, and we got some new things coming up. That's so if true. you want to be a sponsor for the premier fundraiser in town. Does it have a Is website? It? Do you have a website for Death by Chocolate? Or yeah, anything? it's part of, it's on, um, we have a Facebook page and we also, it's on the TwinFallsRotary.org. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So people can go there and find out more info. Yeah, so Paul will be in to tell us. All right, and he's always cool. a funny guy. For an yeah. attorney, he's pretty darn funny. He is, yeah. He's, he's pretty laid back for an attorney. And I've worked I mean. with many an attorney, and he, <laughs> he is. He actually is. He's which, kind of a regular guy. He's just a regular Paul. I mean, I know some attorneys who, you know, they're... They're not regular. Guys. Well, they're, and I've worked with a few on. of those. Let me tell you. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And then the, yeah, and then there's Paul. He's kind of in a, cl a category all of his own. Yeah, he's the greatest. Nothing, yeah. you know, he, he doesn't get flustered. He just deals. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you need. Yes, that is <laughs> You true. don't need your attorney to get more flustered than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Never a good thing. Well, we do have some uh, stuff to talk about this morning. I guess one of the first things I wanted to talk about, we talked yesterday a little bit about this Sony hack and how Kim Young Un from North Korea, uh, the investigators looks like they're they're uh, connecting the dots here, and Kim Young Un is behind this big hack that Sony had, and uh, behind the reason why Sony pulled the movie The Interview, which was supposed to open on Christmas Day, because mm -hmm. it was about a plot to kill uh, this guy. Uh, the leader of North Korea, assassinate mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so due to threats by, apparently, North Korea, Sony decided to pull the movie. Yeah. Now... People are really upset by that. 
There's that, and then uh, there's also the Alamo Draft House Cinema and other theaters are not going to be running a movie called Team America World Police. That is Why, does uh, that have something killing North Koreans in it? It is a <laughs> 2004 American satirical action comedy film written by Trey Parker and Matt Stone and Pat Brady from South Park. The film is a satire of big-budget action films and their associated cliches and stereotypes with particular humorous emphasis on the global implications of the politics of the United States. The film features a cast composed of super marionettes. Team America focuses on a fictional team of political paramilitary policemen known as Team America World Police who attempt to save the world from a violent terrorist plot led by Kim Jong-il, which is Kim Jong-un's dearly departed father. Yes. So they are pulling that one. Also, okay. I, have I, a, I have a question. Is there a movie that's coming out on Christmas that doesn't involve North Korea? I mean, really, was that this is like the theme? Could there be one that isn't killing North Koreans, plotting to kill North Koreans? Why is this a theme this year? I don't know, but hey, I have no problem with it. Do they? Not? I mean, it's funny how you all think alike, but come on. <laughs> now everyone's afraid. Don't even mention North Korea. Well, he must I, feel I, like I saw, a powerful little man. He right must now. absolutely he does, and and yeah. I saw it. In fact, I shared it this morning on Facebook. It was a picture of the funny little fat boy from North Korea, uh, in front of his soldiers doing the salute and all this kind of stuff. And it said, "Meet the new CEO of Sony of Pictures." Of Sony, I yes. Know. And it, it was so it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I shared it. I well, shared it. you know what. It's it's one thing, you know, if it's a uh, government or you know public safety. It's another one. It's your business, and you know their stock is dropping. And you know I know people say that, but they're like, look at if this is going to cause people not to go to the movies, you know, then we're not going to we're going to take this out because it's going to cost us more because Christmas Day is one of their biggest things. Because some people are like, I'm not going to go to the movie because that's at the theater. But now and I'm afraid. But now there are some people who say, I'm not going to go to any Sony Pictures from now on. I'm not well, going to buy the products because they wimped out on this deal. Well, I mean, you can say that, but you know, when you have a company like that, sometimes you got to make those decisions, you know. And I think working for Reebok, when you have a high-profile company, sometimes you have to think in bigger, you know, things like for your business like you worry if, about the consumers i mean there's so many things that you think about that oh gosh are they going to think this or are they going to think if that gonna, what if something happened if they're going to run with their tail between their legs like this they're they're done they're doomed well they're not a government they're not an army they, 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 make they any do difference. movies what if the theater in new york did get blown up well then, then what it would should be you have terror- said then what do you anyway. say it could anyway but what you know but then what do people say you know it's a business call it's 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 tough when you're you're a high profile um, business like that you know it's easy to sit back in your chair and go oh they're wimps you know what it's another their stocks dropping it's another they're losing money and you know what their stocks are going to drop anyway well i mean what because you're not like out there with what you're you know gun shoot north korea it, it's a movie it's a movie um company well, then let's look let's look at it from this perspective then Hackers and little governments like North Korea will be able to dictate us in the future. I understand that. Here's, if I were a political, I've often wished I could draw. If I were a political cartoonist, my cartoon today or yesterday or whenever would be a huge, big old Bigfoot type of creature being led around with a ring through its nose and a chain attached to little Kim Jong-un who's just a little speck on the ground, walking around with his pride and his chest and his belly stuck out, so proud because he was able to manipulate the United States of America, the most powerful nation on earth, and even some of the biggest businesses in the world. This guy's got it figured out. But think about it. Sony was manipulated. Sony had a lot of internal documents exposed. I mean, they had all their social security numbers exposed. They had all sorts of internal stuff exposed already. They 
they have been humiliated. They've had internal emails exposed. So, you know, it's not just like, oh, we're not standing up. Look it. They're probably thinking, what else is going to happen? Are you going to go into our bank accounts? Who knows? But it's easy to sit here and go, oh, you should have. And it's their business. And, uh, and I know what it's like when you work for a big company. You worry about things like that. And things affect you that you're thinking, you've got to be kidding me. But your name is a huge thing, your brand. And they've already had a lot of, I mean, they have been terrorized already right now. So it's not just don't show the movie. They've had their internal stuff poured out. Well, then the, we, we just as well give up. We, they have well, it's won. not we. It's not no, the U.S. It is it's we. Sony. It is Sony's we. been attacked. It's not our company that's been attacked. What if that happened to our company? You know, you think, wow. What's uh, what's going on? You know what? I, I it's don't, very I don't easy care. for you to the sit hackers, there and say that. The hackers have won. Well, they maybe won. they have in we this just situation. As well roll but, over and, and, and play dead. Well, I don't think it's the U.S. It's Sony, and it's their decision, and they're a private UA, company. Well, that'll be the U.S. Well, of course. It's always a hacked. slippery slope. No, it is. But in you fact, know what? The U.S. You has have, already been hacked. Hey, so many companies have been hacked, but they've had a lot come out, and it's their decision, and. And I, I understand what those decisions are like. They can be very difficult. Well, I'm sure their legal department is sitting there freaking out right now because I know what that's like. Well, I'll tell you what. We, uh, the, it, 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 it was very succinct. It said it perfectly that Kim Jong-un is now the CEO of Sony. And who and knows I, what else will be the CEO before And I'll, before t- and I'll tell done. you one thing. If there was a bombing at any theater and people were killed... That would be the end of Sony because they're like, you had, a, you know, you knew the threats. You did it anyway. We, you were told us it was safe. We're now dead. My kids are dead. Whatever. You know what? Um, I'm sure their legal department is going, you know, it's not worth the risk. You're going to lose a lot more. You'd lose a lot more money. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Kelly. Um, you know, with this. Sony situation, it makes you uh, step back and realize that our security in the United States is non-existent, basically, if somebody wants to, you know, get in through the Internet. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much true. And there's a real simple solution to that. Unplug the thing. You don't mm-hmm. have to live on the Internet, and I think we were better off before it. That's my comment. Thanks. All right. Yeah, well, some, for the call. You know, sometimes you have to wonder. You know, you think about it. People's bank accounts are hacked. All sorts of things are hacked. Um, that's one of the reasons I don't do online banking, yeah. honestly. Well, I'm I've like, made no the way. comment before I'm going back to cash. Tom <laughs> yeah. at one point said, you know, uh, pad and pencil. He's done. Like, yeah. you know, had a few things. The he was un- giving up his computer. The uncrashable computer, as long as you don't let the dog eat it, you know? You're, yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. good shape with the pad and the pencil. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at any rate... Uh, you know, I just had to get that off my chest. And we've got, uh, it's Open Mind Friday. I didn't even say guys, that yet. You know, we finally got some time today. The first time in weeks. I know. Talk to us, people. Talk to us. 736 is the number to call. Have you got your Christmas all done? What's going on? How, how are you coming? What's this? I got a message that popped up in front of me. I guess I better read it. <laughs> Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. It's Open Mind Friday, and that's the number to call. Seven three six zero three hundred. You got it. You got it, Jill. I wanted to mention too before we take a call that has come in that the folks at Canyon Pond would like you to stop by before Christmas, and they say if you know if you need a little extra money, uh, they've it's a pawn shop. Okay, so bring something in and pawn it, get some extra bucks. Then after the after Christmas or New Year's or whatever, and you can afford to buy it back, that's how it works. That's how it works, people. And while you're there, you might want to spend some of that money at Canyon Pond because they got some really cool stuff. Guns, they got lots of guns are always good things to give for Christmas. But they've also got watches and they've got they had cook. Well, the last time we haven't been in there in a while. Right, right. We've only been there the once, so we haven't. We don't. We you know we're not doing them justice. We don't know what they have. They had cooking equipment. They had they camping did. equipment. You just have to go in and see what they have. That's right. Canyon Pond is on Shoshone Street across from Will's Toyota. And I'll bet if you went and tell them that Kelly and Jill sent you, they would probably kiss you on the lips. Mm. Okay, maybe not. But, you yeah. know, they'd be Poor glad Dave. you Dave. You're putting him in an awkward spot. <laughs> That's right. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number. Uh, no, they, they hung up. Okay, what about this one here? Top story, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I always hear Jill. She's complaining about the election and on and on, but... I have the solution. Once we throw the Democrats out after the first of the year, what? Jeb Bush gets elected president. He has his good father and brother to assist him. Everything will be perfect. 
Have a nice day, buddy. <laughs> you, you just, uh, I think, uh, um, announced my nightmare. I think that's, I think that's a practical joke. <laughs> Do, yeah, I think so, yeah, too. No. You think? <laughs> we have Paul Arrington here with us, in case you wanted to know who that voice yeah, was, from gonna, the Rotary Club of Twin Falls. He's going to be talking about Death by Chalk today. I thought we just talked about it like a month or two ago, and here it is coming around again. Oh, my again, gosh. Hang tight there, Paul. we got a call. Top, but but, but clearly add whatever you want to add. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can be our, you you can be you our third co-host. <laughs> Why not? Because you're officially not on till 8.30. Yeah. I know, I'm just sitting here. I know, see, Jill told you to be here at 8.20. She put on the calendar at 8.30. 830. So, you know, we it's got to follow right. protocol. If we if we just let you on now, well, Why you not? Know, we might be fine. But clearly add your opinion, because it's open well, one Friday. Let's this phone call. Let's see I know, right. I'm top, dying. Top, top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly and Jill. Morning, wow, Tom. you're really clear today. Are you not working I'm today? I'm standing outside of your building. Uh oh, should Uh-oh. we be disturbed? <laughs> Do you have torches and everything? Do I need to call nine one one? No, no, no. I remember I told you I was going to bring you a treat. Oh, oh yeah. They wouldn't let me bring it to you. Why? Sitting out at the front desk. Should we have Kyle come in and bring it? Let me go get Kyle. <laughs> I don't know. We'll get it at the break, probably. That would probably be the best way you to handle it. You want to say it on air? Okay. Well, so, Kyle, that's so nice. You're a good guy. So you've got cake, and there's a bunch of cookies uh, for, you, for you and the gang. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I just, you know, good, happy retirement. Well, thank and you. my daughter is a, a baker, and she made everything from scratch. So I hope you enjoy it. <gasps> oh, my goodness. We will, Kyle. Thank you very much. Kyle, that's you so will. sweet. Maybe, Merry, maybe Merry she'll want to be in, uh, happy Hanukkah. in Death by Chocolate someday. <laughs> Call me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Oh, that's very cool. All right. Hey, it's Open Mind Friday, folks. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Hey, I just I just wanted to tell Jill that uh, uh, if Jim Bush gets elected, it, she might as well be happy because it'd be the same thing as what's going on right now. So there's no difference in them. So I just, uh, and that cyber attack, I'll tell you what, that... Uh, we don't need to go in there guns and blazing, but we need to cyber attack them just exactly the same. And I think that would take care of uh, a lot of, uh, you know, because uh, you, we can play the same game. But uh, anyways, that's just what I wanted to comment All right. On. Well, thanks, thanks for the guys. call. And as far as the cyber attack on North Korea, I think we need to develop a theory like Israel does. You hit us, we hit you twice as hard. Isn't yeah. that something like that? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's uh, you know. two eyes for an eye. Yeah. That's yeah. how they so, survived all so these So instead years. of just stealing our information, see, we'll attack you and your computers will blow up in your faces. Well, I'm I mean, sure they're probably, explode. I'm sure our, our <laughs> glass in their faces and everything. I'm I think sure our, cool. our intelligence is after them right now as we speak. Well, I would Don't hope so. Don't you think, Paul? I would think so. I'm still just picturing all these North Koreans turn on their computers and then they blow up in their face. I'm just. <laughs> I, I'm sure well, North Koreans don't have computers. That's they just right. want that, food. Oh, they don't. They no. actually want food. The, innocent, the, the, the people of North Korea <laughs> yeah. are, are innocent in this thing. It's the government. It yeah. is, you know. So, and, and, and these government f- people, I mean, they are not only brainwashed, but they are scared to death of these dictators oh, yeah. because he killed his own uncle. Yeah. Do you know how he killed him? He put him out in the middle of the field and fired mortars at him. Mr. Young Un, yes, the big humanitarian of North Korea, well, I don't killed think his, his uncle. I don't like think his that. uncle was a Boy Scout either. Well, of course, they're I mean, not, I none th- of them you know, are Boy Scouts. I mean, Scouts, I think he killed quite a few people. Of course, but they don't even have electricity in North Korea, so I don't think they have computers, Paul. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure the government cars has. in North Korea. I don't even know. The government has computers. That's how they did the cyber <laughs> but attack. But I mean, like though. the regular people, you know. No, the of course people. they don't. I think most of the people in North Korea live in work camps. They don't even have. You food. know, it's it's a it's a terrible place. It is uh, it is hell on. It's worse than hell on earth. It right. would the people would probably be better off. Uh, Okay, never mind. I'm not even going to say if that. If the movie becomes real life. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. That's a good way. That it, I wasn't a, thinking that. It's actually that, not a movie. It's a documentary. The, prob- the problem yeah. of it is, <laughs> is that it, if, if something happened to him, they'd be replacing him with somebody just like him or worse. So that's the problem. We'll be right back here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero. the number to call here this morning on Top Story. We have... Paul Arrington with us this morning, and uh, he's helping Jill. Uh, do you help Jill, or are you kind of in charge of this death by chocolate thing? You know, it depends on if Jill's in the room or not. When she's here, it's <laughs> I help her, but everybody yeah. knows the truth. 
<laughs> Everybody knows the truth. Paul's actually president of the Twin Falls Rotary Club now. I see. El Presidente. El Presidente. I, so I prefer I've been to so be lucky. called Sir. <laughs> now, there are several. Aren't there several? What? There's Rotary three clubs. clubs. Yep. We have a, our, our club is the Wednesdays at noon. We have a Tuesday morning at the Red Lion, the Blue Lake Club, 7 a.m. breakfast club. And then we have an after hours club, which meets. Elevation. Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, five fifteen. River Rock Grill. Okay. Oh, so did they switch? The twin... They switched locations. Yeah, they moved uh, earlier this year. Okay. So well, enough about them. We got to deal with our is, stuff. Yours is the Twin Falls Rotary. Or Twin Falls, but whatever <clears throat> your schedule is, if you can, if you have an inclination to give back to your community and your world, Rotary is a great way to do it. And. There's meetings that fit your schedule that can fit your schedule. All right, it's so there's true, no excuse. Schedule. No excuse then. For no, no excuse. Kelly class. <laughs> so Paul, okay, so, you're yeah. here for a fundraiser that we do. Um, I thought you just wanted me here to. Yeah. To say goodbye give, to Kelly. Give, give commentary, huh? No, yeah, actually. Wait, no, I didn't. I wanted you to beg. No, actually, I'm here <laughs> for... Well, we do. We're coming up in just a little over a month, January 29th. I know. From 6 to 9 is our 10th annual Death by Chocolate. Seems like just yesterday. Yeah. These things. And so we this preparing for Death by Chocolate goes in stages. We Jill spends... Pretty much the whole year working on getting entrance into participants into the various categories. And beginning in about September, yeah. I start going around and talking to local businesses and looking for sponsors for Death by Chocolate. And we have sponsorship levels from $250 to as much as you want to want to give to this fine event. Mm-hmm. And sponsorships include... Uh, depending on the level, there's tickets. We have a lot of advertisement with the paper, and we're on the radio and TV spots and posters and banners. And You're everywhere. You can't get away from it. We're, literally, we're everywhere. We, we are uh, – one of the great things about being in Rotary is that you get to be connected with so many people. And, and in our club in particular, we have – Radio, TV, and newspaper, all represented by membership in our club, and they really, really, really help us out a lot in getting the word out for this event. And if you've ever come to the event, then you know that the word is out. Right, but it's so great because, actually, we just gave some funds away. I mean, it was oh, yeah. from Ice Cream Fun Day, but just the other meeting we gave money to Valley House, uh, money to Anything's Possible for the Wendell oh, Show. Yeah. Remember they were yeah. on? So, I mean, you raise money for that. So your sponsorship is really helping um, all the local charities, our local projects. And it's really – I think it's the premier fundraiser in town. Don't you, Paul? I – I wholeheartedly agree. And so that's what I'm here for today is we're just, we're looking, this is year number 10. This is our big yeah. year and we're super excited about it. And so we're looking, we want to break records in sponsorship. We've usually done around fifteen to $16,000 in sponsorship. Um, the event in total, we've been in the 30s, the $35,000 yeah. range raising wow. to give back to local charities. But sponsorship takes up about half of that and we're eager. We want to. We want to hit the twenty thousand mark, and okay. we can't do it without our local community. So, and the before businesses. we run out of time, how do they get involved in this, and what will be expected of them as a sponsor? Wait, can I just say one thing? We have a new sponsorship level this year. It's called Best in Show, which is now the judges usually. We have a judges um, award, a people's award, and now the judges are going to judge for the best chocolate item in show. So that sponsorship level has not been filled yet. That person, we're going to have a special trophy made. They're going to present it to the winner that night and then of course they get all the sponsorship but paul how can they get connected if they want to donate and what will they they be expected to do so really you'd be expected to give us some money and, and then up. go to the event <laughs> really that's it I, we, if you want you can get a hold of me you can call my office 7330700 and uh you can con- you can talk to me about uh if you want to to provide a sponsorship i can get you the packet with all the details um and like I said, with each sponsorship level comes some tickets, and you can go to that, or you can give them to employees, or do whatever you or want. Customers with those. Or customers as a thank exactly. you, and they get a special VIP entrance. Okay, so then yep. who makes the chocolate? Oh, so the local wow. local companies. Jill has gone out. We have twenty five different companies, five in each of five different categories: brownies, cakes, cookies, candies, and unique dessert. And they make it. And so with your sponsorship. That just go the sponsorship money basically goes back to the community 
Um, but the tickets give you the opportunity to come in and eat this chocolate and to vote for it and to participate in the event All on right. another level. We would All love right. a Best in Show sponsor, and it's the first year, and you get a lot of play, like I just said. So it would be like Best in Show sponsor, sponsored by... Whomever. Insert your company name. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, seven three dramatic three, pause. Seven three three zero seven hundred to call Paul. If you know me and you got my email address, email me. I'll I'll be happy to yeah. to take your sponsorship questions. So please, right. we would love to break twenty thousand this year, right? For, in exactly. sponsorship money. Twenty thousand. That's our goal. All right, Paul, Paul. Larry, thank you, sir. Merry thank Christmas, you. my friend. It is. Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, All Happy that Kwanzaa, stuff. Everything. All of it. Yes, All indeed. Of it. <laughs> All right, this is Top Story. We're going to talk about food safety up next here with the food safety experts from the Public Health Department. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call on Top Story. And uh, next wow. hour we'll have Open Mind Friday. We do have, you know, a couple of guests. And we've been kind of busy talking about Kim Jong-un, you know, oh, yeah. and our good friend from North Korea. Oh, yeah, but, my best uh, friend. Yeah. So he doesn't bomb our studio. <laughs> He's the greatest. <laughs> I love him. He's so cute. Yes. Anyway. Well, anyway, we're going to talk food safety here in just a sec. But first, I wanted to tell you about the Infrared Baron from Far More of Idaho. And I know you've heard us talking about this. We talked about it all summer. And now during the wintertime, we really don't irrigate during the winter. So, you know, you'll think, well, why, Go ahead if you why are we talking about it now? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this spring, when we fire our pivots back up and stuff and our irrigation systems, you're going to want to know about this. And so what it is, they do overflights of your fields with infrared photography which makes which allows you to see all kinds of things you can't see with the naked eye or regular photography you can see where the dry spots are where the wet spots are you can see what your irrigation system is doing and uh far more of idaho will help you make adjustments to make it work like it's supposed to your yields will increase the money in your pocket will increase and you will finally decide that infrared baron does not cost it pays so get a hold of them at Far More of Idaho, 324-3341, or at uh, farmoreofidaho.com. All right, back by popular demand, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. We have Craig Paul and Josh Jensen. They are food safety experts from the Public Health Department. Good morning, I, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm thrilled you guys survived Thanksgiving. So you, you basically put the turkey in within the two-hour time frame, and you survived. We did all right. We did, yeah. That in itself is a good testimonial. So you did follow your own. You practice what it's you good preach. Th- good thing you're back because people question me. <laughs> did they live? I don't know. And, and even better, we didn't get any complaints really. So yeah. Really? Well, funny story. My family didn't even let me in the kitchen. So So this is why you survived? <laughs> is that because <laughs> you're... you're, you're uh, because of my too, background. Too picky about, okay, because you're going to tell them to do this and to do that to keep the food safe, and they just want to do it the, their way. He just doesn't Probably. understand the five-second rule. <laughs> no, really, Ma. <laughs> it's just their five seconds. Okay, so <laughs> so Christmas, they usually have a ham, right? Okay, so we dealt with the turkey thing. You helped with the butterball hotline. No one even called for the hotline for you guys on what to do? I didn't get any calls. No, no. Did you have your phones on? <laughs> oh, okay, so. oh, I knew there was something. <laughs> so what do people have to worry about with a ham? Because I understand that's the most popular dish, you think, for Christmas? Yeah, it is one of the most popular ones. And, and most of the hams that you buy in the grocery store are, are pre-cooked. And so it's a matter of just reheating them. And it's recommended that you reheat those up to about 140 degrees. And uh, once you do that, then they're, they're good to consume. So when you say pre-cooked, I mean, you know, they say, some people really have no common sense. Could they take it out of the can? Does anyone take it out of the can and eat it? Would they get sick that way? Because it is pre-cooked. What does that mean? It means in the, the place where it was uh, processed, it, was, um, it went through a process where they, they basically cooked it. And but then, you do have to heat it up, though, right? You have to, right? Well, you don't have to yeah. if you just want ham but do sandwiches, you? right? <laughs> You, no, have, you run the risk if they cooked it and it's dead, you know, everything is dead in it when it is then at the factory, but then they package it and then it's transported oh. from there to the store or to a warehouse and then from there to the store. And if somebody doesn't handle it right in between when they cooked it and when it gets to you, you could have things in there that could make you sick. So cooking it, well, reheating it, not technically cooking, is a really good idea. Because it could kill, because it could have trichinosis. Is that what's in ham or pork? Trichinosis is going to be dead once they've cooked it in the factory. So they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to worry about that. What What do they have to worry about? Listeria. Oh, listeria. That was in melons a few years ago. Wiped out a lot of. Listeria is everywhere. It's in the ground. It's 
it's all over the place. Um, you usually don't get sick until it gets to be a pretty high dose, and that's why it's not an issue usually. But the problem with listeria is, unlike most bacteria that will make us sick, listeria will grow in your fridge just very, very slowly. Oh. And that's why we tell people don't keep things in your fridge for more than four or five days because if there's listeria there, it'll grow slowly. And after when you get to days six, seven, you could have enough listeria in there that it's going to make you sick even though it's been in your fridge the whole oh. time. So, Actually, so, Kelly likes listeria. Well, can't, you, can't, you like, can't you like dip your food in iodine or something to kill it? Or, can you, you just know? scrape it off? It's yeah, still scrape good. it off. Well, and that's why you reheat. That's why if you okay. reheat it, you've killed right. the listeria. So you kill it. Yeah. Okay, but what if you want cold ham sandwiches or something? Well, as yeah. long as you reheated it well, and then you cool it down in your fridge, and it's not there for more than five or four or five days, okay. go ahead. All yeah. right. All so right. what are the symptoms if you do have listeria? I mean, that you should go for? I mean, because obviously it can be fatal, because the people who ate the melons, it was fatal. What, what should people look out for if they're having symptoms, and, and how do they know it's not the flu and not, and not go to the emergency room? Uh, most foodborne illnesses are going to be generally around your stomach intestine area. You're going to have the classic symptoms of you're in the bathroom a lot and it may be, so I don't di- want to get too so, detailed. So diarrhea? Diarrhea, so vomiting. Vomiting, okay. You know, right. the fever, the chills, that sort of stuff doesn't usually go with foodborne illness. It's usually, it, it's stomach intestinal okay. stuff. Okay, all right. So when do you know it's a point of like, this isn't just the flu? And some people go, oh, I just have food poison because listeria can be fatal. At what point do you think, okay, I have to go to the doctor? Emergency room or something. Most foodborne illnesses won't kill you. But Most, how long do they last? Well, they depending on the type, it can last anywhere from 24 hours to months. Oy. So if your symptoms are going on more than two couple of days, or if they're getting really worse, you can't keep anything down, you can't keep fluids in you, that's when you should be talking to a doctor. Okay. okay. All right. Good All right. Stuff. So don't just say, oh, you know. I hope I mean, you're writing this down, fatal. folks. <laughs> Listeria, <laughs> not not a good one. Now, well, do, you, do you guys answer questions if people have specific questions? Yeah. So they could write your number down, put it on the refrigerator, and call you on Christmas morning when they're cooking the, tur- the ham? They'll get our voicemail on Christmas okay. morning. Yeah, that's but, what yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> but we okay. could call them back. I mean, we Okay, so so at if, that point it's too late. Now it's like you know they have to. Hey, but what's the biggest uh, call you get, or the biggest question you guys get, the two of you? The biggest one we get um, that people are concerned about. Okay, what's the gen- most ridiculous one then? <laughs> <laughs> do you get any calls? We, Does we do. And talk to you. <laughs> more of the calls we get are about restaurants that we inspect. Um, It's not necessarily about how do I cook this because they can use the package directions. If you follow the package directions, you're going to be fine. They've you know they've researched. Well, I don't know because people have a tough time reading the 45 mile an hour speed limit sign on South Washington. (laughs) So I'm not sure they can read the directions. That's because they're going too fast. (laughs) No, they're not. They're going too slow. (laughs) slow. It's like you ever drive with this man? Um, (laughs) Anyway, I digress. You digress. So restaurant inspections now in other cities, especially in New York, and I kind of like this. They put um, grades. On the windows, A, B, C, D. I don't even know if they do F, so you're just closed at that point. Uh, you'd be closed at that How point. How come though. we don't do that here? I think that's great because you look at it and you're like, wow, a C, and then you know what a mm-hmm. C is. You're like, I'm not eating here. The the Idaho Food Code um, is administered by the Department of Health and Welfare out of, out of uh, Boise. Um, and so they're the ones who write the code. We just enforce it. As it currently is written, um, We all of our re- inspection reports – our public record. In fact, you can go to our website and you can type in the name of any restaurant yeah. you want to and you can get the results What's for the last the few. the website? It is <laughs> www.phd, and then the number five. Public Health Department five. Yep. Dot Idaho. Spell the whole thing out. Dot gov. And I had no idea. And you just oh, go yeah. to restaurant reviews? It, it actually says inspections. There's a little tab along the inspections. top that says inspections. And you click on there, and you type in the restaurant. Now you got to remember, it is a computer, so it doesn't think real well. If 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 you type it in and you don't find anything, yeah. try something else. Like you might have to put the in front or take the the off. Uh, try a couple okay. of different ways, but you'll find it. Yeah. And all the inspection results are there. And how often do you do inspections? Um, once a year, or if we get a complaint. So, do you think that it would be beneficial to go to a grading system like they do in um, New York or other c- cities? I mean, do you think that'd be or interesting? Or are you allowed to comment on that? I'm, I'm going to let the food program coordinator <laughs> comment on that. Josh, what do you think? Well, my personal opinion is that yeah. it, it would be beneficial, um, but the system we have in place right now is is, is pretty good. It uh, it is kind of a scoring system. It tells you what the 
the critical violations are, how many of those are, um, how many non-criticals there are. And based on that, um, depending on the type of facility, if you have more than three or more than five criticals, then a mandatory follow-up inspection is required. And so when you go look on the website, what you'll see is you'll see, you know, the number of violations for that establishment and what the category that, that those violations were in. So, okay. so we do have a pretty good system right now. So I have okay. a question. Do you guys, either of you, eat out anywhere? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do more than I probably should. <laughs> You'll actually find most of us restaurant inspectors will eat at the restaurants we don't inspect. And that's for reasons Why? not because it's a bad kitchen, but just because every time I walk in a restaurant and the owner recognizes me, oh, uh, yeah. they want to give me something free. And that really puts uh, me in an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> and so it's don't just you hate when that happens, there. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Here's your dinner free. So, so Is that guys... considered a bribe? It could be. And that's why I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you two the inspectors? You actually do the inspections? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. There, there are other inspectors as well, but we do, we both do inspections. Yeah. So what else do you guys do that maybe people don't know about? Um, well, uh, the same thing with food inspections, restaurant inspections. We do the same thing with daycares. Uh, oh. those, you can look up any daycare and you can find their inspection results. Really? Um, yeah, same thing on the those. website. What else do you inspect? Um, this is interesting. If, if Talk any... show host studios? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We're, we're working on that one. But okay. uh, if, uh, if anybody lives outside of city limits, if they're on a septic system, um, we have records of most of the septic systems. If you're thinking of buying a lot outside of city limits, come and talk mm. to us. We can help you figure out what kind of septic system we, you'll be putting in? Will it be a $7,000 cheapo or is it going to be a $20,000 expensive system? And that can help people to make that yeah. decision before you even buy. Do you do you do a water samples? We will take them, but we don't actually run them. We take okay. them to a lab. But um, people no. can get their water. They can see what their water is like by taking it to you, right? Uh, well, no. We'll tell them where to take oh, it to. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. We don't have All the right. lab. Okay. Um, right. but, uh, do you we, want to recommend, or, or are there different labs out there and you don't want to do that? Uh, as far as I know, as far as water testing, there's only one lab in the Magic Valley, and that's Magic Valley Labs on um, there the are, intersection. There are other labs, state-certified labs in the area that, okay. that you can take yes, your Yes, Duke and Holtz, to. right? That, don't they do labs? Okay. Yeah, okay. So anyway, you got to look at it. Do we have a question? We do, well, we got a caller. Oh, we got I don't a caller. Know, but maybe they want to know how to cook the ham. Top I story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I was curious where... <clears throat> Church potlucks uh, fit into this, and maybe small church schools who who offer food for lunch, such like that. Oh, do they inspect them? That's a good question. Or do you ever get? What do? You, how do you handle that? Uh, usually, for for church potlucks and stuff like that, we we don't get involved with that. It's a. Uh, At know, what level does it take for you to get involved? Uh, usually, when it gets involved in in selling uh, potentially hazardous foods to the general public, okay. um, is when we get involved. Uh, sc- you know, potluck, school potlucks, work potlucks, stuff like that. We do not get involved at all. Non but non profit organizations sometimes can receive an exemption depending on what okay. they're doing. What about somebody maybe makes a batch of cookies each day and sells them out of their house? Is stuff like that regulated or nope? Don't not- you need a commercial okay. kitchen? Not not for those low risk foods like cookies. Oh, okay. You don't. What so. if it was hamburger there are or something so many like that? Be a different deal. Then. Okay. That rent commercial kitchens because then they do bakering. They could do that in their house. Well, it depends on what the product is, and it depends on if they're if if they're selling it directly to the consumer. Then that's fine. Like if you bake a batch of cookies or bread or something like that, and you go sell like to a farmers market, for yeah. example, that's that's perfectly okay. Now, if you make a lot of cookies and you're wholesaling it to a, a grocery store or something like that, then um, then you would fall under regulation and have to be okay. inspected and oh, well, that's permitted. good to know because, um, yeah, I've, I suppose I've heard if, of so many people doing that. Yeah, I'm, I suppose if people had questions about that, you could answer the quiz. If they're thinking, yeah. gee, I want to do this, but what kind of regulations Just, will I come under? Yeah, and it comes up often, and uh, a simple phone call uh, can really set you on the right path. All right. So if anybody has any questions about that or questions about how to keep their ham safe for the holidays, what's your uh, numbers again? Uh, you can contact me directly at 737-5915. Okay. Uh, we also have on our website uh, that was given earlier, we have our contact information there. Uh, you can get our email address. phd5.idaho.gov, right? Correct. All right. 
All Very right, good. so everyone be safe. No food, no no food poisoning this uh, this holiday season, huh? That's yeah, the keep goal. Our keep finger, your fingers. fingers and, and, <laughs> and the five second rule is still okay. <laughs> That depends on that depends okay. on whose house you're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right. Well, Jen, we have uh, uh, Craig fun, Paul guys. and Josh Jensen. We appreciate you coming in. And Merry Christmas, Happy Merry New Christmas, Year, you all guys. that kind of Thank stuff. You. Merry we'll Christmas see. to you. And okay. this is Top Story. We got Open Mind Friday this next hour right here. So stay tuned. Okay. Welcome back to Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call. And before we get started in anything, uh, if, if Kyle Hanks and his daughter are listening. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow, this is very cool. We went they... at the break, and we brought it in studio, so if you can see it on video. Yep. Yeah, it's on video. and uh, They brought us a box of peanut cho- butter and raspberry cookies, chocolate chip, and this gorgeous heart happy retirement cake Yes, for isn't our that, dear Kelly isn't class. That great? I took a picture of it. And oh. I posted it on my Facebook page. Okay, great. So you can friend me and see it. Kelly Class. I'm just on there as Kelly Class. So. so Kyle, why haven't you told me all this time that your daughter is a bakery? You know, I do Death by Chocolate every year. Every year yeah. I try to find vendors. Oh, yeah. Every year. And by the way, we didn't say for some reason where the event was. Death by Chocolate this year. <laughs> Thursday, January 29th, 6 to 9 Canyon Crest will be having dinner specials and appetizers starting at 4, so you can come early for dinner. You can go in the back door and come in to Death by Chocolate, and you can buy tickets online at TwinFallsRotary.org or at, when the tickets are ready, at the Chamber, um, um, Kurt's Pharmacy, and the mailroom. So anyway, sorry about that, but oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful, oh, yeah. and I did try, I and usually good don't too. I'm eating eat a chocolate this stuff, cookie as we speak. but I tried the peanut butter with raspberry, it's not that sweet, which is great, and um, my husband loves peanut butter cookies, although I never make them, and we don't yeah. really buy them, so, but I'm going to take some to him, so thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah, beautiful, no kidding. Very nice. gorgeous, and you don't usually eat stuff like that, but you did No, I don't, case. but I tried it, and when they said it was peanut butter, I tried it, because I don't, I'm not a big chocolate fan, can you imagine? <laughs> anyway, that's okay. I know I'm weird, but it was delicious and it wasn't too sweet. I, you know, I sometimes have trouble with things too sweet. Yeah, I think it's just right. we don't normally eat chip sugar. Cookie is just right. Oh my goodness! Thank it's got you. Got chocolate chips in. I have to tell you, my my dear mother, God bless her soul, she grew up through the depression, and so when I was a kid growing up, she would make the best chocolate chip cookies ever of all time. But she wouldn't put very many chocolate chips in them because they were expensive. <laughs> of course. You know, so when you were eating her chocolate chip cookies, it was actually kind of a treat when you found one with a chocolate chip in it. Oh, so really they aren't <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. They were just vanilla well, cookies with maybe a chocolate chip. <laughs> yeah, but I mean they were I mean they were the it's still called the best. Find the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> find the chocolate chip in the cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. So anyway, it was great. But thank you Kyle Hanks and Kyle, I don't know the daughter's you. name, do you? No, okay. and um Oh, it's that. Wait, what's Oh, wait a minute. What do we got here? A name? Let me see. I and mean, we got to give, you know, we got to give credit where credit is due here. Oh, there's a there's a there's a note on it. Okay. Oh. Here we go. I've never heard. Oh, it's it's Heather Harrison, Little Grass Shack Bakery in oh. Rupert. Oh. Well, Heather, you know, you should have contacted me for Death by Chocolate maybe next year. Yeah, there you go. Maybe so it's too next late year. now? Yeah, we're filled. Ah, okay. If we have a cancellation, I'll let you know. But we, we usually fill up like around September. Okay, so what's the name of her place again? It's called the Little Grass Shack Bakery in Rupert, 423 South. I don't know what the name is. Gist Street, is that right? I don't know. G Street? G Street? I don't oh, know, I don't, Rupert. I don't know. Anyway, look her up. She has, She's on Facebook, Little Grass Shack Bakery. Beautiful stuff. Yes, indeed. And you the, can see it the, on the cookie video. was delicious. Later, you'll be able to see it on the video. Thank okay. you. So sweet. Hey, we've got a caller, so let's, let's go to the phone here. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Hey, thanks for having my call. <clears throat> I don't know if you're going to be on the air next week, Kelly, but I just wanted to wish you happy retirement. Um, I don't Thank know you. you're anything, but uh, I listen <laughs> to the show once in a while and uh i really appreciate the show and i was trying to think of why i thought it was uh that, that it was a draw that it was a value and i think what number one of course um you make it entertaining both of you make it entertaining but i think uh because you uh, especially kelly reflect the values of the community at large i think people think they have a voice in you i think is another reason 
And so I'm hoping that uh, whatever voice you have in your replacement, which I don't know if that uh, happens at all, but uh, that they're as equally entertaining, if that's possible, and that uh, they reflect the values of the community. So that's uh, that oh. was my comment. Wow. Thank well, that, you very much. Nice. I am I am humbled. I appreciate your comments. I'm you kind of, wow. I'm Happy like, retirement I'm kind of, and Merry Christmas to you both. Thank you, and you too. Well, thanks. Absolutely. I was kind of I'm like, do I not have the values of the community? I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you have the values. I don't know what I'm reflecting, but anyway, that was very nice. Yeah, There's it so was. many people wow. that say wonderful yeah. things about you, and well-deserved, my friend, well-deserved. Well, and I know people have been asking about the show, and all I can say is just be listening for the next few days, and things will kind of play out. You know, there's still some things that haven't been decided yet, but... Uh, they will be uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks. So just hang in there and keep listening. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate all the <laughs> listeners. We really do. Yeah, and, and some of the comments I've gotten in cards and letters and stuff, gosh, I am, I'm so humbled, so you know. Touched. I mean, here I am. I come to work every day and think, okay, i got to do another show. Da, 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 da. So you get on there and you do it. Then you go to other things. Then you go home and you do your stuff. And you get wrapped up in everyday stuff. And then some of the things that people say to me like, like that, you know, like, yeah, no. you're the voice of the people. It's like, wow. You know, I never, I don't consider myself that. I just consider myself of somebody who goes to work every day. I know, it's funny how we bills. look at it like, hey, yeah. some days you're just not no. in the mood to talk about abortion and guns, yeah, but you, right. someone's got to. But you know <laughs> what? Um, it's interesting. The thing that about radio that's weird for me is... Um, uh, you know, I, I wonder if I make anyone laugh. You know what I mean? I, I can make you laugh or whatever. But you wonder, is anyone out there laughing at anywhere? Yeah, when you stuff? can't see it's or just, hear your audience. There's yeah. no feedback. That's right. Like, that one's so weird. I can tell you one thing, Jill. You are hilarious. Oh, okay. okay? Well, you and know, I mean that in a good way. Oh. I mean, no, you are the comic side of the show. Oh, well, th- I you mean, know. as well as, you know, the discussion part. But but I'm I'm not as quick-witted as you. I oh. When I, in my younger years, I was fairly quick-witted. You were fast, but fast, the, baby. The older I get, the worse it gets, you know, and, and somebody will say something before I do, and I'll think, dang, I wish I'd have said that, you know? Well, it's so funny, because <laughs> when I was at the uh, Art of the Gift, and I and some and someone came up, because I listen to you all the time, and I just had to ask you, do I ever make you laugh? And he goes, no. <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, no, I have to be honest with you. He goes, I'm an honest person. He goes, no, you never do. I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Well, you make me laugh. Okay, good. Yeah, I know, time. I know I can make you laugh. But, you know, you just wonder. It just goes out in the ether. You're like, who's listening? Yeah. And then is... you find out later, you know, someone's like, That's oh. one thing about being in this type of a setting, you know, when you're not on a stage or something where you get yeah. the immediate feedback. Yeah. That's it's, the uh, weird part about yeah, radio. It's yeah. like, I'd love to know if people laugh. Uh, have a special program planned for uh December thirty first. Don't don't. Uh, dis- I'm not going to spill the hook. beans yet. We got a hook. Not going to spill the beans yet. Come but on, I Cal. Think, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be entertaining, and uh, so I'll just I'll leave it at that. Thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes <laughs> you, you give too much. I know. I know. I've. I'm a, I'm a giving person. The art know? of the I'm hook. A giving person. It is Open Mind Friday, so Tell you know us what if you, you want think. Whatever you want to talk about, seven three six zero three hundred. We really haven't had a lot of time for one. For quite some no. time, and today it just kind of worked out that we did didn't have that many guests. And oh, this so. was a this was an odd story. The one we we were going to talk about this. The Indiana woman, she amended her will. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, the one with the dog. Oh my gosh, you guys, what do you think of this? An Indiana woman, her will amended her will before she died to stipulate that her German Shepherd dog be cremated and buried with her ashes. There was just one small problem. Bella, the dog, was still alive and quite healthy when the woman passed away. So Connie Lay died on November 25th, and her will has sparked a heated debate on animal rights. According to a local news report, the nine-year-old dog was slated to be put down on Tuesday, but the action was put on hold when the public outcry against euthanizing a healthy animal went viral. So Bella has been taken to the local PAWS shelter and will be cared for by the nonprofit group until a determination is made concerning his future. The shelter is is being flooded with calls from people interested in adopting Bella and also from those demanding that the dog's life be spared. So um, anyway, uh, this is the weird part. Indiana law states that animals are property, and as long as they are not being treated cruelly, owners may do with them as they see fit. Now, I don't know, putting them down when they're healthy, is that cruel? Who knows? Uh, anyway, so uh, she wanted her attorney said that um, she wanted her dog's ashes to be buried alongside with her. 
Okay. And she has a legal right to do this in Indiana. I have a question. Hmm. Did she really mean buried the same time she is being buried with her ashes? Or did it mean when my doggy passes on, please make sure he is buried with me? Well, I mean, that's what's weird. She said before she died, she wanted her to be cremated and buried with her ashes. So Hmm. I would think uh, the dog should be adopted by someone when the dog dies then pour its ashes over wherever she is. See, that's open to interpretation, I think, the way that she had it written. And if she just if she had an attorney helping her with that, the attorney should have known better. Well, this and is he what should the have attorney, asked this question. This is what the attorney said. He said Lay's lawyer, Doug Denmuir, spoke with the Blaze and told his client, told the Blaze his client wanted her dog's ashes to be buried along with hers. Demure stressed well, that his can... client was within her le- legal rights to make this request. I think it's mm. the understanding that to put her down and then bear him together. But yeah. I would think what's wrong with, a, I don't know, a few more years for the dog's life. And then, What do you guys think about this? Wow. Is this crazy? That's, that's a tough one. Would that's you do it? One. I mean, it's a beautiful, healthy-looking uh, German it's a beautiful shepherd. German shepherd, yeah. Nine years old, and he has to die because she's dead? He's probably thinking, hey, I didn't like her that much anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I could have a kid I could be adopted with. <laughs> I want to live a little. She was an old lady. Let me t- go for a walk. That'd be nice. A run. Yeah, that that is a tough one. Boy, what do you guys think? Seven three six zero three hundred is the number. This to call one is on shocking to me. I'm like, you're going to put down a beautiful, healthy animal. Why? Why? So her ashes are. She doesn't even know. And she doesn't know. She's gone. Yeah. Do you have to tell her? <laughs> and I don't know. I maybe the I attorney know. can write her a letter and see what she thinks. Come if on. They, well, if they did wait, yeah, she wouldn't know. She's dead already. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Is there some sort of a curse you can get by not following someone's final wishes? What about a curse of killing a, a healthy dog? Well, I mean, really, is it the dog's fault that she couldn't live it out as long as he did? Well, didn't? okay. If you want to, if you want to get technical about it, I mean, the dog won't know. The well, dog won't know if you put it down. Why, though? Why would you put it down just for her ashes? I mean, my gosh, it she's her, dead. It was her final request. Well, what if it was her child or her husband? You know, I'm well, going, can you go? It would suck to be the child or husband, <laughs> wouldn't it? Sorry, buddy, you got to go. Your wife said so. Can you go with me, please? Actually, I've decided because I'm your legal guardian. When I go, you're put, being put down, too. I don't know, man. Is this a... the craziest thing you've ever heard? Come on, Cal. I don't know. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. It is. You know, Would you I, even I want your it, dog to die? No, no. But I think maybe she was afraid that maybe nobody would care for her dog like she does. So maybe, you know, she would want to put it out of its misery before it got into misery. Well, I don't some know. dogs are given to the shelter because their parents have died or whatever. But we're let just, them. We're just about to go to go break. Go ahead. Let's what do you think on this quick, one? Top story. What do you think? Now you know why the husband always dies first. <laughs> Go ahead and answer that. Go Why? ahead. Because he he can't he, he wants to. <laughs> we'll be right back on top story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on top story. Welcome back. Uh, the word of the day. It's time for the word of the day. Already. And it's Why brought to you place? by the folks at the Happy Landing Restaurant, where I was yesterday. And you're going to go into what you had. I had the special, which was meatloaf and mashed potatoes and green beans and a roll. Wow. And then... And the tooth held out, huh? It did, It's yes. a Christmas miracle. Well, when I walked in, uh, you know, she says, you know, we got our specials, meatloaf. That's soft. We got mashed potatoes and everything. So they listen to the show, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a cracked tooth that I can't get pulled until next Tuesday, for crying out loud. I just told you I'd help you out. I'm glad it wasn't an emergency or anything. But I know. <laughs> anyway. Although Oh, you did say maybe with your oh, you, and you had pie. I had the best coconut cream pie I have ever had in my life. It was well. There's one thing we can say. It, it was great. It was delicious. It's homemade pie, coconut cream pie from the Happy Landing Restaurant at the Twin Falls Airport. I told you you had to have a piece of pie. <laughs> yeah. Because we keep talking about it and you haven't had a piece of pie, and then you said I have a cracked tooth. I go eat a soft pie. Yeah. How soft that was, was it? Was a great idea, Jill. I love your your. Yeah. Trying you know, to help you out, buddy. Yeah, Trying to help absolutely. you out. Absolutely. So anyway, Happy Landing Restaurant. Go there. Uh, tell them you heard it. If you've never been there before, tell them you heard about it from Kelly and Jill. And you buy a drink or a meal, they'll give you a free piece of homemade pie. Yes. Okay, but we have to get through. We always get distracted. I and we know. Forget the name. Yesterday's and the $100 instant winning name is Marsha Weaver. 
Marsha Weaver. Marsha, Congrats- Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha Weaver. Congratulations. She's probably never heard that before. Oh, I know. Poor, and your one- poor Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> your $100 word of the day for today is shop. Shop. S-H-O-P. Something shop. Something you'll need to do between now and next Thursday. Shop. So uh, go to our website, newsradio1310.com. Click on word of the day. Type in shop. Listen Monday. If you hear your name Monday and you play the word today, you win 100 bucks. That's how easy that one is. We have somebody who's been waiting for quite a while. Okay. So let's go ahead and take him. <clears throat> Top story, you're on the air. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Hey, I got an easy solution for that uh, dog deal back east. They could just bring it to Filer and that jackass cop they have could shoot it. <laughs> I'll bring it to Filer. <laughs> okay. That is sad. That, yeah. that's, that's I don't think even, I'd want to do that. That is so sad. Uh <laughs> The point was, <laughs> let him live. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, don't let him out loose and file her. <laughs> no, no, this is what they say to the poor dog. We got news, good news and bad news. Good news is you're going to live. Bad news, you're going to live in file her. <laughs> don't All forget. All righty then. Stay in your owner's home. I don't know if, if many people realize this, but file her is... Oh is what? actually my hometown. Well, you got issues, pal. My mom and dad lived there uh, That's 62, right, it is. over 62 <laughs> years ago when I was born. Oh, my. And your dad's still alive. He is, yes. Did he hear about that dog shooting in Filer? I'm sure he probably did. But okay. Gosh, I don't want to talk about the poor dog. No, no we want the dog to live yeah, in we want Indiana. The dog, we kind of want the dog to live. So anyway, <laughs> seven three six zero three. You never know how live radio is going to end up. You know, top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Did you get to see your cake yet? Oh, my Kyle, goodness. we now, gave didn't you this whole thing about on the show. Didn't you hear us bragging about you? Gave out your no, daughter's I've, I've been information? I've in and out of the car. That's, that's why I took time off to come give it to you in person, and they wouldn't let me do it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, anyway, Jill, yes? I, if you could, on the top of that cookie box, if you could call my daughter, I want to get her into that death by chocolate. Well, Kyle, we just went all over this at the top of the hour. What I said was, why hadn't she called me sooner? But unfortunately, <laughs> we're filled for this year, but I will call her for next year or if we have a cancellation. Okay, so, you do that. You keep that I on have it day. right for me, but all these years, why didn't you tell me that your daughter was a baker? I did. I told you that last year. I said I, knew, I, was, yeah, I should but, get her into death by chocolate, but I was too late then again. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm You're usually, just a day late and a usually short, by like September. You know, we're filled up by September, but then through the fall, some people cancel. But anyway, beautiful stuff. Oh, it's yeah. on the video. I don't, we should have had you come back. I know. I'm <laughs> sorry, Kyle. I said to and do no, it, but I was overruled. No problem. Uh, just a happy retirement, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And thank you. Thank you, We Kyle. should have Kyle on the air. Yeah, I know. Bye. Sorry, <laughs> Kyle. Tell your daughter, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's Heather, Bye. right? All right. Yeah, it's Heather. Yeah, yeah. Heather right, Harrison, cool. Rupert. Right. That, was, that was nice. That Little was Grass nice. Shack yeah. Bakery. Uh, Next year, I, I, I took a picture of the retirement cake that she baked for me. And I put it. I put it on my Facebook page. Did you take a picture of the Kelly cookies? Class. I haven't. I didn't have time. I barely got, had a chance to take a picture of the cake during the break. It was beautiful. So, uh, top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, I was just wondering what would have happened if the dog died first. Would we have put the woman down? <laughs> <laughs> I you know, think <laughs> this does open all kinds Why of possibilities, not? doesn't it? Why not? <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you think about that? Is that crazy? What would you do? Uh, me personally, wouldn't have requested that. Probably. <laughs> I would but have found, she did. So I would no. have found a home for it before, oh, knowing you're going to die. Definitely. I love my guy. He's awesome. Oh, Had I him know. for years, and I can't imagine. I just, uh, but you know, had, what would have happened if he would have died first? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but here's the thing, though. Do you <laughs> take the risk when you're not around anymore? Do you take the risk of your of your adored pet to go someplace else. You find you as a, as an owner, you find someone, you know you're dying, find someone. Put it in your will. I did when I went on vacation, my friend Robin was going to take care of Lizzie and Gracie if something happened to me. Oh, well, yeah. I changed my will before we went to Mexico last year. Are you serious? No, I'm serious. Wow. Well, that's thinking ahead. Hello. This Thank is top you. story and we'll be right back. Seven three six zero three zero zero. The number to call here on this open mind Friday. 
I tell you, we're, I don't know. We're just kind of having a good time today. Oh, my God, at the breaks. How, how, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to miss this. Sometimes you come here, you know, in the morning. You haven't had enough sleep. You're a little cranky. Whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah, you can. And then we always leave in a good mood because you and I, we always have fun. I yeah, mean, if it's not on the show, it's in the breaks. I mean, at least we're <laughs> laughing. We always leave laughing. Sometimes, folks, the breaks are the best part. I'm t- the ones that you don't hear. That would be the best part <laughs> off mic, Kelly and Joe. Top story. <laughs> Uh, it is fun. Oh, my. Well, hey, one thing we haven't talked about yet today is honey. honey. And uh, the folks at Stanley and Company have the low and honey loader. And this is for big feedlots or dairies. It loads uh, all types of manure from liquid to frozen and dry. You know the routine. You can probably recite this as, as, as I speak it. Mm-hmm. So you know the routine. Get a hold of Pat Hartzell because he can fix it up so you can see one of these in operation. Now, this isn't for everybody. You know, if you got... A couple of calves out on the pasture and during the summertime that you butcher and eat during the in the fall. You know, you're not going to be able to use one of these. But if you have a big feedlot or a dairy operation uh, where manure becomes an issue, then this is where you want the low and honey loader from Stanley and Company. Pat Hartzell is not only the salesperson on this, but he is the expert on them. He knows all about them. You got any questions, he can answer. His number is 280-1167. That is 280-1167. There you go. I have to say that I just got done with a chocolate chip cookie. That took a uh, while. Slowest time I've ever seen you eat. <laughs> well, I'm I'm trying to you know do this too. It's hard to eat and talk on the air. I mean, with, I, I normally and do that. And with a sore tooth. And a sore tooth. Yeah, yeah. But My I was goodness. able to get it, and it was delicious. You were able to to figure it out. Now I'll probably take these out and share them with the rest of the crew here a little bit later. You're supposed ex- to. Except maybe. The chocolate chip cookies. I might just take those back to my desk. They have more than one in them. Uh, They do. I know. They have a whole handful. This is like your fantasy when you were a child. It was. Mom, can I have more than one chocolate chip and a chocolate chip cookie? I remember as a kid, I must have been 11 or 12, I said, Mom, can you put more chocolate chips in these? And she said. (laughs) And she she did. I think from after that point, I think there was like two of them. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, God bless her soul. I know it. Anyway, and nobody ever cooks like your mom, you know? No, although I told you my friend Amy, my best friend, she says her mom is a terrible cook. Well, we kind of talked about this yesterday. Families growing up now, uh, having families. They don't even cook. That's right. No, it's so depressing the, to me. The kids don't learn how to cook. No, they don't. And this is what you're, you know how we have fond memories of eating around a table yes. and, you know, with the family? Yeah. This will be their fond memory. Their, their parents handing them a Happy Meal in the back seat <laughs> on the way to soccer practice or a soccer game. That will be yeah. their memory. They I stop know. and eat in the minivan. Oh, uh, yeah. Those were good times. Oh, gee. Good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Yeah, with other fries that had the, from previous meals that are all over the floor, oh, you know, and stuff know. like that. Hey, I know how it is. I know. I had a family once. Uh, anyway, I didn't know this, but I read this this morning. Regular doses of ibuprofen can allow you to live up to twelve years longer. <laughs> oh my! How much? Do you I don't to, know. How much do you have to take? And I don't know how they know that. <clears throat> but it was rats or something. Poor Joe. If he'd have just taken ibuprofen, he'd still be with us for another 12 years. I mean, how much do you have to feed a rat? I mean, I think they were <laughs> mice, weren't they? Uh, well, in tests, the drugs appear to hold back the aging process as well as helping fight disease. Ibuprofen, which is used every day at home by people who, to treat inflammation, pain, and fever, may be the key to developing a long sought after anti aging drug. Uh, Dr. Brian Kennedy, president and chief executive of the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in California, said (laughs) there is a lot to be excited about. The research shows that ibuprofen impacts a process not yet implicated in aging, giving us a new way to study and understand the aging process. What are you laughing about? Because this is what they tested it on. In laboratory tests, ibuprofen was found to extend the lives of worms and flies by the equivalent about 12 years in human terms. Like, when have you seen a worm age? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what and happened? What they start getting wrinkles. <laughs> what does an old worm look like? How long does a fly last? You know what I mean? Without a fly swatter. How do they age? They get gray on them? Like, are you kidding me? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm laughing with Jill. Uh, <laughs> come on, this stuff eats your liver up. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. Well, everything's through your liver. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, ibuprofen <laughs> and I leave. They both eat your liver up. Whoa. But don't <laughs> worry, worm, worms. How do you know an old worm? You know. 
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't, and I don't a fly. Either. I don't either. They don't last long in our house if Tom's around. Oh, heavens no. They don't Are you last, kidding me? They don't last long. We have a fly-eating cat now. Oh, <laughs> she eats cats. And cat. she's pretty good at it, oh. you know? It's the only reason I keep her around. She gets a fly and a mouse once in a while. You know she loves you. You know? Okay. No, 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 no. Anyway, now, um, Mabel, so... Mabel, Mabel and Moby, they're not fly-eating dogs. Well, I think Mabel might be a little bit, but... She's so cute, she at least Mabel. She at least plays with them until they die. <laughs> <laughs> she tra- no, she's like she races alive them around toy. the house. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, thank you. It's alive. Thank you. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on Top Story. Welcome back. Gosh, we almost got another one in the in the bag here, don't we? It's hard to believe. Time Friday. Is- Does it feel like Friday? Yesterday felt like Friday. Yeah. So I don't know what today feels like. I don't know. It's about time it got here. <laughs> I will say that. So we've got a little article here, here on since it is the Christmas season. And the probably gift, a lot of Christmas p- um, parties this weekend. Yeah. Or, oh, actually, yeah. we're going to have a Hanukkah party, the Jew crew. Do we have a caller? Yeah, we do. Okay. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm pretty good. This is Jim. Yes. Jim, how that. are you? Yeah, one of those I'm, distinctive I'm fine. Voices. Hey, I made your shepherd pie last night What'd out of the think? book. What would you mm. think? Well, me, I liked it, but. My Frank. brother loved it. Oh. So, you know, if I can get one over there, then I'm doing great. So you get kudos for that. Frank, and that's a, yeah, Frank liked it, huh? And, uh, yeah, and he, that's from my cookbook, Comfort Food Gets a Vegan Makeover, which would make a great gift. It is, it is. <laughs> and it would make a great gift. But I'm not giving mine away. Thanks, Jim. It's, it's signed to me, so. Thank you. Hey, on that dog, you know, uh-huh. I'm a flight instructor, right? Uh-huh. And uh, I I have a real dangerous job for about five minutes. My life is at risk while I get in my car and drive out to the airport. Once I'm there, I'm fine. <laughs> but but my little doggy, uh, he was with me for 15 years, and I had already made if I got if I got killed yeah. arrangements for somebody to take care of him. I sure didn't want to have him done if I got killed. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And, is that crazy? Uh, that's nuts. That's just nuts. It's eccentric. Yeah. But um, I wanted to say, you know, I got. I think I got my first transistor radio when I was about six and would listen to it with the earplug. And I've been listening, and I prefer radio over television. And I've been listening since I was about six, in little Chinese transistors yeah. under the covers. And then when I got a little older, I learned how to make... Uh, uh, crystal radios, and we'd use the clothesline for the antenna. Right, right. And a Quaker and, Oats box for the coil. And, right, yeah. right. And I would pick up KOMA from Oklahoma City. Oh, yes. Listen to it at night. But of all the radio programs I've listened to, you two are my favorite. Oh, I, wow. I, 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 I will miss you dearly. Kelly, well, and I Jim, hope your replacement, you. and and I hope you stay on, Jill. If you don't, then I'll have to hunt you both down. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, it's just been you. a great ride. I I've I just love this radio program, and oh, and I want another C note. <laughs> a what? You what? Uh, yeah, I want a hundred dollars. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, I did. Jeez. Jim, you're you like are... the luckiest person ever. No kidding. So and, you're buying you know, lunch next I, time. I lived in Nevada, and I didn't gamble much, but I won great stuff on the radio. I lived in Utah. <laughs> I won great stuff on the radio. So I, I've really been lucky and, and enjoyed every moment of well, it. Well, cool. And the reason um, most people don't win is because they don't enter. That's right. you got to well, play, you know. Look, right. at, look at me. Three times we're for lunch with y'all. <laughs> That's amazing. A C note. Lunch is on you next time, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the call, Hey, Jim. say hi to Frank that. for me. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for the feedback of my shepherd's pie. Yeah. Frank cool. liked it. He liked he it. He really, really liked it. Yeah. Okay, so this regifting thing. Oh, here. okay. So we were talking about holiday gifts. A lot of times people want to give a little hostess gift, things like that. And sometimes they think, oh, I forgot to buy a hostess gift. I'll just give them something that I have. Okay, This is. these are the keys on, on what not to do. The gift isn't obviously personal. Do not regift anything monogrammed, <laughs> no towels or sweaters in your favorite color or size. The new recipient might easily be able to tell. Yes. Jeez, my name starts with a J. Why do you have a P on it? So anyway, that is a no-no. <laughs> the gift, I know this is hard to believe, must still be sealed. 
So resist the <laughs> <laughs> resist the urge to give away those coffee beans you tried and hated. Everybody knows that tampered goods are tasted good. So what I would say is I would put the coffee beans in another jar with a ribbon. Oh, there you yes. go. Good so you idea. Could still regift. Absolutely. All right. You want to make sure the gift still looks new. So stains on your scarf are a blatant giveaway. <laughs> Kelly class. <laughs> Who gets stains what? on his shirt all the time. How do you know that? Why? It's brand new, I swear. Okay. <laughs> you must re- re-wrap your re-gift, okay? Because sometimes <clears throat> the original paper shows up, and what if that person was at the party and goes, oh my gosh, I gave her that blender with that paper. So at least <laughs> unwrap the gift and re- re-wrap it and make sure there was no name. You know how you sometimes will get a bottle of wine or some of those cute bags and you want to reuse those again? Yeah. Take the, the tag off, all right? <clears throat> Here you go. If you're, The gift isn't on its way to the trash. If you are going to throw it away, then don't give it away. I mean, come on. Would you want that plastic unicorn bobblehead? I don't know about that because um, some people have different tastes, you know? I and, agree. And I think just because you don't like it doesn't mean someone else won't. And if not, right. then give it to goodwill One or give it to di trash is another person's treasure yeah i mean i would i would give it away to if, if especially if it was fine and then the other one you didn't steal the gift because really this is just common holiday sense <laughs> do not steal the gift you're about to give and the, the other one was what was the one that you said um don't give the gift to the person who gave you the oh, gift. Oh, yeah. That, that would be a very key That's the top thing one. right there. <laughs> yeah. Especially at the same year. Now, if someone did that to me, if I gave them something this year and then they gave it back to me next year, I wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have remembered. Oh, my goodness. So, so it depends on who you're dealing with. If you're dealing yeah. with somebody like me who ha- is very forgetful, can you remember you're, the show? You're fine. You're fine, you know. But if they have any kind of a memory, I wouldn't do that. It can, you know, it will reflect poorly upon you. <laughs> you think? Yeah. And hey, have a, have a happy holiday season this weekend. Yeah. Happy holiday parties. And it's time for the Huckabee Report. You can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed, Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger, the financial advisors, and the number is 736-6563. Uh, Clearwater Power Equipment wants you to know, all the ladies to know, oh, t- they, have, t- they have chainsaws. <laughs> now, you can tell your husband that you would like a new chainsaw, or you can get a new chainsaw <laughs> for your husband. <laughs> or you can get a new chainsaw for both of you. For you, to use on yeah. your husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, or you can get one for the kids or whatever. Uh, you know, they got chainsaws, Husqvarna and Echo chainsaws. If you're cutting up some firewood, because it looks like we're going to be getting a little bit of weather here know, over the next a few days. Some weather. So you might want to consider a new chainsaw to cut up that firewood. So you will be all ready to go. Yep. And uh, they've got them. they got the sales. they got the service. they got the knowledge. That's all they do. They just sell this power equipment stuff. They don't sell lumber, and they don't sell cabinets, and they don't sell carpeting and stuff like that. It's power equipment. That's what they do. 252 Washington Street, there where General Building Supply used to be. You can give them a call at 734-7767, the folks at uh, Clearwater Power Equipment. That's how I'm easy to, that is. I'm going to go on my Facebook page, and I'm going to put down her, her website. Her, uh, Information. Information for Heather Harrison. Harrison, who uh, the little what well, you have the name right there. I put it in my purse. I do already. the little grass shack bakery. <clears throat> Heather Harrison in uh, Rupert. Way to go! We got a box of chocolate chip cookies here, homemade. I mean, these are homemade. They're beautiful. And the peanut, peanut butter, butter with, with raspberry, raspberry jam. jam, not too sweet. Yeah, and a retirement Delicious. cake. Look at that retirement. Look at that cake. We forgot to ask you, Kyle. Maybe we didn't listen at the time because everything was going on. What What's in the cake? Yeah. Is it chocolate cake? Well, we'll find out now. We'll, we'll find, out find, shortly, find out shortly. Kelly's going to find out shortly. Because I guess he also brought us, what, some milk? And... Oh, milk and plates and napkins. Wow. I mean, unbelievable. Kyle, and you, you wouldn't let him in the demand. studio. It wasn't me. I mean, it was just you. Me. You we wouldn't had... let him in the it's studio. All my fault. I said I let him in. You said no. All... Well, Don't blame me. We didn't me for have this. room. I'm sorry. Don't blame me, Car- Kyle. Well, if I'd have known then what I know now. That's but at right. any rate, uh, so I'll have that information on Facebook. So if you're looking for holiday oh my goodies, you know, I would suggest Heather is. I'm the definitely person. calling Heather, actually. Uh, probably n- now for next year for the category yeah. she wants. Get her on the list. Well, yeah, you get once you're on yeah. the list too. It's, yeah, you know, you got to get. It's kind of like a government list. Once you up. get on that list, you can never get off. It feels well. I wish that, but it it kind of fills up quickly. 
Yeah, after each event, after we have the event, they sign up for next year. Yeah, so I want to make sure I get her in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hey, we're done here. We're out. Uh, who we got Monday? Anybody? Peace out. Oh, I think we, we have... have Jack Bell, because he coming in Monday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jack What's Bell, that? he's Remington? been in... He's, oh, we've had Jack on before. Yes, we have. And he's in, really involved in this Remington Trigger lawsuit. Yeah. And uh, he's kind of the pivoting, uh, the pivot, the... Well, he's the man. The, the hit, he is the man. Hitch pin of this thing. And hitch pin. He's, he's really got an interesting story to tell. So if you're into that Remington trigger lawsuit thing, you'll want to be listening. It's killed a few people. It has, yeah. And really we have has, Randy so. Staples, of course. Absolutely. So we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Happy Goodbye, holiday Jill. and happy Hanukkah, Jew crew.